Hi, everyone, and welcome to Automation Unlocked, Build Workflows to Do Your Work. My name is Anna, and I'm a product marketing manager here at Smartsheet. Before we dive in and start talking about automation, I do want to mention, of course, a couple legal bullet points that you've likely heard a couple times already today. So uh, anything in our presentation that might be forward-looking may be included, and any trademarks that you see are not endorsements. And then, of course, the important part for those of you that are learning new things today is we do have a chat that is staffed by some of my colleagues. So if you have any questions over the course of this session, feel free to type your questions in there. Now, as I mentioned, my name is Anna, and I am a product marketing manager. And what that means here for me is I run our Work Smart webinar program. So if I sound familiar, you may have joined one of my webinars already. And if you haven't yet, I would love to see you there. And starting out with an Engage-focused webinar next week, all about the new capabilities that we announced today. So our goal in this session is to talk about automation. And before we get into the logistics of how do I set up automation? What are the different capabilities and the different parts of automation? Let's take a step back and talk about why. So automation at Smartsheet is really here to save you a lot of time and to let Smartsheet own your work and your process a little bit. So less cat herding, more moving things along with automation. So you can really focus on the parts of your job that are more valuable, parts of your job that you enjoy more, and of course, the parts of your life that mean more. So whether you want to go spend some time playing with your dog like me, or you want to spend some time in the backyard or working on a hobby, letting Smartsheet own a lot of that day-to-day -day for you will free up time for all of those reasons. So with automation, you're going to be able to set up reminders about dates that are important in your sheets. Uh, you'll be able to notify yourself and others by defining to Smartsheet what's important. So whether you want to know when you're assigned a task or when a row reaches a specific status, all of that can be done through automation. And then in addition to alerting yourself or others, basically an FYI, you can also use automation to request updates. So whether you're setting up update requests or requesting approvals on information you're tracking in Smartsheet, all of that is going to help you really make sure that the data you have is accurate. So really enforcing that real-time single source of truth that you're using your Smartsheet for. In addition to these collaborative pieces, automation also is going to let you actually do things to the rows in your sheet. So you can automate freezing or unfreezing rows in your sheet. You can even copy or move rows sheet to sheet. And we'll take a look at how to do some of that in the demo today. Now, when we talk about automation, we usually only think about this third column in my, in my slide here called actions. So as I mentioned, we can alert, we can remind, we can request, and we can move or lock or unlock. Automated workflows, when you're setting them up, actually have three parts to them. So you're going to first tell Smartsheet the trigger. And the trigger is when should this automation kick off? Is it when something changes in my sheet, whether any change or something as specific as if a task is assigned to me? Or is it a date that's in a date column in your sheet? Or even is it a recurring date? So if you want to request an update on a weekly basis, that counts as a trigger as well. Then you have your condition, and this is the only optional part of your automation where you can further define, only send this automation for rows that match this condition. And then lastly, we come back to those actions. So really you're telling Smartsheet when, which is your trigger, and what, which is your action. For our demo today, we're going to move into Smartsheet, and when you're setting up your automation in Smartsheet, you're setting it up from top to bottom. So your trigger condition in action, but it's going to look a little bit different than it did on our previous slide. So today we're going to start here in a sheet that I've set up for new product approvals. This is a sheet where I am managing requests for new products from users across my team or organization and my job as the owner of this sheet is to see new requests come in through a Smartsheet form, approve those requests, assign those requests, and ultimately the people assigned to the request are going to update statuses, dates, and progress, and complete these tasks. Now, 
for the purpose of our presentation, I'm going to be assigning and approving and really kind of wearing all the hats and doing all the different roles so you can see the automation in progress. We're going to start here with a form. So a smart sheet form, if you haven't come across one before, can be customized and created to add a new row to your sheet by anyone who you share your form with. So this is a great way to intake information from users who don't have access to your sheet. For me, I'm going to use this as a way to demonstrate some of this automation. So you'll see I can immediately refresh my sheet and I have a new row that's been added with a new product request. Now I've set up a couple automations heading up to our automation menu that are going to really help us through this entire process. And all of these are set up with those same three components, the trigger, condition, and action. Under manage workflows, for the sake of our presentation, I've gone ahead and added numbers so we can see the order that these automations will take place. Now, our first automation has kicked off, and I've told Smartsheet that any time that I receive a new request, rather than checking my sheet throughout the day to keep an eye on new requests, I'm just going to wait for a Smartsheet to tell me. And instead of having Smartsheet just tell me there's a new request, I'm actually going to trigger an approval request. So this means that I have a new product that's been added, and I need to approve it before we can actually kick off this product and start assigning it. So my approval request here gives me all of the important information that I need. So I've customized this uh, automation to give me just the key data, and then I can either decline or approve. I'm accessing this in my notification center, which you can access anytime by clicking the notification center button in the top right of your smart sheet, but others you collaborate with will receive this in their notification center as well as their email and can even download our mobile app to receive push notifications or receive these automations in Slack, Microsoft Teams, or Google Hangouts chat. So really making sure this notification or this approval or update request is reaching you and your collaborators where you already spend most of your time. I'll go ahead and select approve here. And back in my smart sheet, we're going to see my status update to approve. This tells me that we're ready to kick off this product, and my next step is going to be to assign this to a different user. So I've received my new notification, letting me know that this has been approved, and in my title, I've also, also told myself that it's time to assign it to someone. Before I do that, so before we continue on with our process, this is where I want to talk about the structure of our automations, because we're now on step two. As I edit my automation, you're going to see two of those components that we talked about. So my trigger is any time that this becomes approved, and my action is let's go ahead and let Anna know about it so she can assign this new product to someone. Instead of an alert though, this is where we can start talking about what our actions are and what the best one is for each step in our process. So I'm going to change my action from an alert, which is really an FYI, into an update request, which allows me to tell the person, please update this row and assign a user. Now, anytime that a new row is approved, we're going to send an update request. And this way I don't have to go back into my sheet to update someone to own this row. And I'll go ahead and click save. And we can go ahead and update and assign this to myself. Now, before I do that, I'm actually going to erase it. Let's walk through and now build our own automation for step three in our process. So, so far we have submitted a row through a form and our automation has been to request an approval, which we're capturing in our status column. And then once it's approved, we're going to now update request to assign someone to this approved task. One of the benefits of automation is it allows you to really increase transparency. So if you've ever submitted a form, you know that sometimes you submit a form and it kind of goes into a black hole. You don't know what's going on. You don't know who's responsible for your item and automation is going to help us take care of that. So what we're going to do is actually start from scratch, going to select create a workflow. 
And here is where we can start building our automation using those components. So I'm gonna call this step three, and we want to notify our requester, so the person who submitted this product request. Let's go ahead and let them know any time that their task gets assigned. So anytime our assign to column changes to any value at all. And we're going to make sure we're only alerting the requester. So I don't want to notify everyone and I don't want to notify just me, which is what we've seen in action so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and select one of my contact columns and requester. And then I can tell Smartsheet what should my message be. So I can either include a link to my sheet and actually the cells in the row that's triggering my automation, which is what we've seen so far with a couple of our steps. Or I can come in here and tell Smartsheet, let's send a message only automation. And this allows me to write a message, take data out of the row without showing the entire row. And this is a great way to collaborate with users who might not know about your sheet, but they need to know an update has taken place. So I'll go ahead and write your request for, I'll use double brackets to actually reference the name of my column. And then I'm going to say it's assigned to and reference the name of my assigned to column. So anytime that a row is assigned to someone, we're going to let the person who requested that row know all about this request and who it's assigned to and we'll click save. So I'll go ahead then and assign this to myself. And we're going to receive an automation that doesn't include our entire grid. So you notice we don't see the row anymore. We're just receiving the message that says, my new request is assigned to Anna, which is using two pieces of data from our row. So now that we've seen these various automations in action, I want to take a look at one last one, which is a row movement. So you can use automation to alert as an FYI, to request as an update or an approval request, or to actually take row action. So I can say, if the status changes to something or if it's assigned to someone, lock or unlock the row or copy or move the row. And I have an automation that I've created that tells Smartsheet let's actually move this row to archive when our product is completed. And we've got that automation set up here. So all I need to do then is come into our last row, we'll update our status to say completed, and we'll give our sheet a refresh. Here you can see that row has disappeared. And where has it gone to? Well, I created a copy of this approval sheet and it's called my archive sheet. And it's basically the same sheet and I'll be moving rows to it once they're completed. And this allows me to keep all of this historical data, but the sheet that we're actually working in is only going to have our active product requests. So now that we've gone through all of these steps, let's go ahead and head back into our slides and just review everything that we've done today. So to review, when you're setting up your automations, you have three components to be aware of. So we have our trigger, which is either an action in your sheet, so an update to something that's in the sheet, or a date, whether in a date column or on a recurring basis. We have a condition, which allows you to further define any criteria for us to send automation to, and the action, which is the type of automation. An alert can be seen as an FYI, you can request updates or approvals, and you can take a row action. So copying, moving, locking, or unlocking the rows in your sheet. For next steps, so if you want to advance your automation, there's a few additional things you can do. So conditional paths allow you to incorporate additional automation. So you can use multiple conditions to say, if a specific change happens, here's two optional paths, depending on what else is going on in that row. This is a great way to route approvals to multiple people, depending on criteria, um, as well as other paths, depending on, let's say, maybe a dollar amount if you're managing expenses and things along those lines. You can also have a multi-step workflow. And for example, in our demo, we had an approval request 
And then we had a separate next step update request, and I can actually combine those into a single workflow. So in my approval request, I can tell Smartsheet, if it's approved, take this next step, and if it's declined, take this next step. Lastly, and we saw this one in action, you can choose to either include the row, you can choose to include the row, but only some pieces of information, or you can create a message incorporating text as well as data that's in your row to deliver exactly the information you need to the person that that automation is being sent to. Now, before we wrap up for today and talk about all of your resources at Engage, I wanna share a couple great use cases. So automation can really be incorporated anywhere. So if you are assigning work, if you're tracking dates, there's a couple options there for you. If you're collaborating with others, sending update requests is going to make sure your data is accurate. But our customers have gotten really creative with automation as well. So for example, with COVID-19, we know a lot of retail uh, locations have had to make some quick changes. So installing new hardware and shields and incorporating new processes. And one of our Smartsheet customers was able to save $3 million in Canada and complete this process to install all that new safety equipment three weeks faster because automation was able to help them move their process forward with less of that manual work for the people who were managing it. We also had a customer who's a nonprofit managing 50 Ebola clinics in Africa, who, you know, a lot of the time you don't have all of your full resources in a nonprofit and Smartsheet is owning so much of that work for them. They're saving 20 hours and doing work that they simply wouldn't have been able to accomplish without Smartsheet owning a lot of that process for them. So to wrap up for today, if you need to look further into automation, so whether step-by-step -step instructions for what you saw in action today or a refresher about those three components we talked about, head over to the Smartsheet Learning Center. Uh, I mentioned earlier when we started, I run a webinar program. So you can also register for upcoming webinars as well as view recordings of past webinars, including a more in-depth one that we've hosted about automation. And then we also have a great training and certification team, the Smartsheet community, where you can work with other Smartsheet customers, uh, see how they're using Smartsheet and ask your own questions. And we have an Engage Brain Boost all about automation if you want to practice some of the skills that we talked about today. So I do wanna thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I do hope to see you at Engage next year and I hope you'll be able to join me for one of my Work Smart webinars.